The timekeeper. You left it to illuminate our hearts. I'm here concentrating, now I'm giving a fuck They say to suck, seed I'd rather achieve They want you to believe, and take it slow But I bring it to fruition, I make it grow Manifest destiny, that's all I know But the test keeps testing me, everywhere I go And I'm trying to open sesame and break this fucking mold Now this search for this recipe is eating on my soul All my members and faculties, I'm trying to gain control They say it's a process, we all gotta go to get to higher self from low But a soldier never knows the strength until he faces foe And a mastermind never knows why I'm being told He traces DNA to the ages that were old Beware of the spies and the lies that they sold Align with your constitutional foe Align with your constitutional foe Align with your constitutional foe Million voices in my head saying, Jay, how could I? Why would I? A million voices in my head saying, Jay, how could I? Why would I? A million voices in my head saying, Jay, how could I? And why would I? Start your moon. Sitting meditating on the quality of life Here deliberating if I should stay in this fight They say we don't read, put it in a book They want us to concede, I never look But I use my intuition, I'm never shook They'll never get the best of me, that's all I know Wanna get next to me Police officer Lambie, again, can I ask you why, why, why you're following me around? Everywhere I go, trying to open, dissect me Help me, they know I'm on my search for this remedy Cure this common cold, all these senseless casualties Who's there to console? They say it's a process, we all gotta go Through to get to higher self from low Weighed on the shoulder, dense pain I couldn't show It's hard to find and always know what is your role He gave us our state, more than silver and gold Be clear of the signs and the times that they told Align mind, body, spirit and soul Align mind, body, spirit and soul Align mind, body, spirit, and soul. A million voices in my head saying, Jay, how could I? Why would I? A million voices in my head saying, Jay, how could I? Why would I? A million voices in my head saying, Jay, how could I? And why would I? Who are you, Jay? He's back, the light giver! Hmm. All, all hail Jay! All hail Jay! All hail Jay! All hail Jay! A merciful one! Go back and reconcile your past in order to move tranquilly into your future. Give twice as much as ye receive on the most sacred of days. Hey! The commandments! The tablet! The tablet! The tablet! The tablet! The tablet! The we have tablet. lived by its word, and peace has reigned throughout our world. Pass it on to others, so that they too may be enlightened. A million voices in my head saying, Jay, how could I? Why would I? You will improve your game. You have to improve your fucking game. Those bastards at the palace have opened a royal commission into the sinking of the influence. Uh, the, the, the influence? Why? <laughs> it's a personal campaign. A stab in my ribs. Well, you will deal with it. Hmm? You and the Africa desk. Hmm? 
commission is not the king, so they can't subpoena. So you will deal with it and treat them with disbelief. They have appointed some educated blackamoor to prepare the evidence. Now, you take your coat off, go into your office, and you write to him. Offer him full and unfettered cooperation on behalf of the Honorable East India. No, no, no. Full and willing cooperation. Yes, sir. Two different countries, somehow Niger turn a nigger, and sugar ugly. The problem is we started thinking like the colonists to know what Drew Ali started dropping their consciousness. Peace, everybody. Welcome back. It's Jamal Talib Abdullah Bay. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, rights of indigenous people, um, how to cure things like gentrification, homelessness, and one of the major reasons why our people are arrested, which is possession of cannabis and stuff like that. And we're going to try to go into how we can begin to implement plans to end that kind of stuff. Because what I've noticed is our people, we have a lot of complaints about our harsh mistreatments and no like foundation to stand on to end that mistreatment. You get what I'm saying? Like we kind of like, we complain about justification, but what's the cure to it? You see what I'm saying? So we're, we're trying to focus on the cure to things, not just these bad things are happening and they're just happening. You know, everyone knows this is bad stuff happening, but here's the cure. So I wanted, first I wanted to go into the um, draft of the Inter-American Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. This was approved um, in 1995, and just just so people have an understanding of who this applies to. So, in Article One, under the section um, Indigenous Peoples, Article One, Definition Number One, in this Declaration, Indigenous people are those who embody historical content uh, continuity with societies which existed prior to the conquest and settlement of their territories by Europeans. And here's the alternative, uh, alternative definition number one. As well as peoples brought involuntarily to the new world who freed themselves and cultures from which they've been torn. So this applies to quote unquote black people. Just, just so you have kind of like an understanding of how this affects us specifically. You see what I'm saying? So this, isn't, this doesn't apply to so-called Indians, this applies to so-called black people. Now, I kind of want to go into the definition of what um, you know, these two dictionaries have to say about who we are. So can you go to black and more? And then I'm going to go to American. Because we, we apply the word black to any dark skinned person, right? When we already know black means pale. So first I'm going to go to black in this dictionary. And this is uh, American Dictionary of the English Language, Noah Webster's 1828. I want to go to what black is in this dictionary and what American is in this dictionary. And I'm just going to say uh, the word, you know, we apply black to dark skinned people when really it's the word swarthy, which means dark skin. So we're kind of using the wrong word, right? Um, let me just go into this book. Black, it's an adjective, so that means it's not a person, place, or thing, it's a, a modifier or descriptive. To become pale, to turn white, to become black. Pale, when livid, to bleach, to lighten, pale, to bleach, pale. It is remarkable that black, bleak, and bleach are radically one word. The primary sense seems to be pale, when, or solo. So that's what black means. And here's the definition of American. American, noun, so that's a person, place, or thing. A native of America, 
originally applied to the aboriginals or copper toned races found here by Europeans. Now, can you go to the definition of blackamoor? Blackamoor, a noun, a dark skinned person. A dark skinned person. So, aren't all those various copper toned natives dark skinned? Yes. You see how the Moors are the Americans? And then in the book, it separates the, na the adjective black and the noun more, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So that means those people who think that they're black are actually Moors. Yes. And those people who think that they're black and from Africa are actually indigenous people. Mm -hmm. So that means the rights of indigenous people applies to them. And this is from the Inter-American Declaration on, on the Rights of Indigenous People. So all the other American states, mm -hmm. like South America, Central America, all of them recognize us as indigenous people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? And they're saying it. And it's, it's taken care of. It doesn't matter what exactly. you do or don't know about all we have your to do is history. Recognize, all we have to do is recognize ourselves first. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people think, oh, or who's going to recognize you if you say you're a more? Everybody already has. Everyone already does. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You just have to recognize yourself. They're just not going to tell you, oh, you're a more. Mm -hmm. Every man, woman, and child must confess under their own. You know, mm -hmm. they must say who they are. Mm -hmm. No one can say, oh, you're a more. Like, and they're not going to tell us because they don't want us to know. No, not that. But no one can tell you who you are. No. No, no Cuban can say, oh, you're a Moor. You, you have to know who you are. Mm -hmm. I, I can't start pointing at Asian people saying, oh, no, you're Japanese, you're Chinese, you're Thai. I can't do that. Yeah, they don't, you don't have the authority to tell somebody And the rest of the world can't do it for us, you see? Mm -hmm. But here's what they're doing. You know, they're saying, we're, we're going to recognize you as mm -hmm. soon as you wake up. Mm -hmm. But you ain't black. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that's kind of like where we need to start thinking, like, this really applies to us. Mm -hmm. But then again, we, we'd also have to know... Um, you know, your nationality is what establishes your ability to call to force your rights. Because in law, your status is everything. Now, can you look up what nationality reads? All right, so this is kind of like, I wouldn't be able to talk about this and not talk about any of this. Mm -hmm. Like, this is kind of like, you have to have a background. I can't start talking about the rights of indigenous people without, you know, pointing to you and to the rest of the people how it applies to us, right? So nationality. Nationality. Nationality determines the political status, the political of, an status individual, of an individual, especially with reference to allegiance. So it's kind of like, who do you have allegiance to, right? Now it says political status, right? Mm -hmm. Can you go to what political means? So establishes your your nationality establishes your political status. So that's that's how you recognize on a political platform. So no other nation is not going to recognize you unless you have a nation, right? Unless you have a nationality. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what does political say? Since nationality establishes your political status, what's, uh, what does political mean? It's so funny, the dogma in America mm -hmm. has a shine away from, from doing anything with politics. <laughs> right. I don't want to speak on that. <laughs> well, it's because they, they have a corrupt form of politics, so we think that's what politics is. Mm -hmm. When that platform, the democracy platform, is a corrupt system to rob us, that's why we don't want to get involved in politics. Because okay. we think it's that. But that's not really what it is, right? Political. Yeah. Relating to the management of affairs of state. Mm -hmm. As political theories of or pertaining to exercise of rights and privileges. So, your nationality is what determines your ability to manage your own affairs. Mm -hmm. And to come to force your rights. Mm -hmm. So without no nationality, how can you enforce the rights of indigenous people? You can't. And then even in the rights of indigenous people, it's the, in Declaration on Human Rights and Rights of a Child, it says every person has the right to a nationality. Mm -hmm. Because we're the only people who walk around claiming we don't have a nationality. Mm -hmm. Black's not a nationality. Spanish isn't. Indian is someone else's. Mm -hmm. Latin isn't a nationality. Latin American. afro rican Puerto Rican's not a nationality. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Like all these things. And we're just in this... We just make up these titles that aren't attached to land. Because people are part and parcel, mm -hmm. you see? So, and then can you go to status, please? Since your nationality corrects your political status, we know what political, political is. It's uh, the right to manage your own government, the right to call and to force your rights. Now we have to know what status is. We're the only country that allows people to come in and call themselves an American. <laughs> yeah, because we give up our birthright. And other countries, they... It doesn't matter how many generations, if you're born, you are not because attached it's, to the land. Because it's bloodline. Literally, it's bloodline. Unless you mix with the people, you're not of the land. Because mm -hmm. the people are the land. Status. 
standing state or condition Ryan Olds v. Pennsylvania Oil so that's, Company. So that's the law case. So that, that's giving you an example so you can, you know, research it. So it's mm -hmm. one standing state or condition. Now what else does it read? The legal relation of an individual to rest of the community. So that means since these Europeans are foreigners, what's their relationship to us? Since mm -hmm. our status is where the aboriginals, where the nationals of the land, we're in a superior status. Mm -hmm. Just like if I was to go to China, the Chinese people would be in a superior status because that's their home. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Now what else does it read? The rights, duties, capacities, and incapacities which determine a person to a given class. Now notice it says incapacities. Mm -hmm. So if your status is dead, that means you don't have the capacity to call the force rights, correct? Yes. You see? So since your nationality is your status, without your nationality, you have no rights. What else does it read? A legal personal relationship not temporary in not its nature. Temporary. So that means no one can take your nationality away from you because mm -hmm. it's your bloodline. But if you don't want to recognize it, that's on you. Mm -hmm. What else? Not temporary in its nature, nor terminable at the mere will of the parties with which third person and the state, and the state are concerned. Are concerned. Mm -hmm. And now I forgot to bring it again. But the, I, 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 oh no, I didn't bring it. Um, when I helped that person get her stuff dismissed, mm -hmm. it's because our status is correct. We know we're home. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me what to do on my land. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll try to bring it next time because it's, it's like, <laughs> it's because it's, it's, it, it's sealed from the uh, superior court and everything. Like nice. And you can just look up the case and you can see what we submitted and you can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like this is how you apply. Who you like? I'm home. Would you right? Jurisdiction. Juris means right. Diction is words. Mm -hmm. You don't have the right to speak to me on my land. Mm -hmm. So what do you mean I have to go to your court? Yeah. That's that's just an example. Mm -hmm. And it worked. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like. All right. Can you uh, continue? Because there's there's a, a specific part. Um. It also means a state. Mm-hmm. Because it signifies the condition of the circumstances in which one stands with regard to his property. So that means if you don't have a nationality, mm -hmm. since people are the land, then you don't have any land. Mm -hmm. This is why mortgages, we already talked about that, that's not ownership or creating a title to an estate. Mm -hmm. And Indian titles, which also isn't recognized as ownership, has been forced on our people mm -hmm. because we don't have a nationality, mm -hmm. meaning we don't claim anything. Mm. You see how that works? Yeah. That's it in operation. Mm -hmm. That's nationality, what happens when you don't have it, the situation we're in right now, that's what happens, mm -hmm. you see? And then the situation when you fix it, that's Cuba, what mm -hmm. we talked about last week. Yeah. Now, we already know what Cuba did. We know the situation we're in. Mm -hmm. We see that. Now, let's talk about the remedy, you see? So, nationality is your status. Mm -hmm. Your status is your standing state condition as it relates to your property, mm -hmm. how you manage your affairs, and your mental competence. Because if you don't know any of this, you wouldn't claim the land... Yeah, that's at your feet, yeah. you see? Mm -hmm. This is why they're dumbing down in the schools. And that's why a lot of people in America are confused about Native American mm -hmm. versus nationality. Yeah. Cause and, and being Aborigines, mm -hmm. Aboriginal, But all of those are just words, mm -hmm. right? Native American. Mexicans are Native Americans. Mm -hmm. Brazilians are Native Americans. But Brazil and Mexico, that's the nation that they belong to. That's the bloodline. Mm -hmm. That's the land. This is in India. Mm hmm <laughs> so how can you be Indian yeah. and then be Aboriginal here? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. No. That's why Indians don't have anything. And everything mm -hmm. they do have is regulated by the state. Yeah. This is also why black people mm -hmm. don't have anything. And everything they do have is regulated by the state. Mm -hmm. That's Article 21 of the Christian Black Codes. Either 21 or 22. And it states, you know, Christian property can't own property. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's your status. You're in a civilly dead status. You have yeah. no right to anything. Yeah. You see? That's really how it works. That's it's, why you pass away and they come in and scoop up everything yep. that you never owned in the first place. Yep. That they because you're considered a ward of the state. Yep. You're just a placeholder. Mm -hmm. of all the property that they claim that they... That they're just administrating. Owned. Yeah. Because we won't administrate it. Remember it says administration of your affairs? Mm -hmm. We won't do it because we don't... Because we think we're from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. When this is Northwest Africa. Here. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Right? Now, because you know, we say this is Morocco, which it is. I was going to treat it peace and friendship, right? Let's go into expatriation and citizenship on the United States. All right. Citizenship of the United States, expatriation, etc. Uh, 459, chapter 4, excuse me, chapter 5, temporary provisions. And then right under there, what's the name of the country? 
Morocco. And this is in 1906. Mm -hmm. Now, the Kingdom of Morocco wasn't founded until 1956. So they must be talking about here. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, so that's just, this is just in a, a record from, you know, Congress. Mm -hmm. This is what they're talking about. Hmm. So they, they clearly, citizenship of the United States, they named the country Morocco. Mm -hmm. So that means the Moors are from Morocco. Yeah. This is Morocco. And then they talk about, um, let me see. They talk about how we only lost our citizenship through naturalization. That's the 14th Amendment. Because we gave up our, our nationality. We literally gave it up. Once we stopped calling ourselves by it, mm -hmm. we, we give it up. Now, we can talk about this a little bit later, but uh, I want to go into this, right? So, some of the stuff that... So, we established that... Can you put this on? Let me put this on the table. I'm just going to hold it. So, we established that rights of indigenous people applies to us, right? We established that those people who think that they are black are actually more, so we did it with just a simple dictionary. Mm -hmm. We proved that the Americans are the various copper tone natives found in America. So, when the Cubans did what they did, they're copper tone. The Mexicans, they're copper tone. Us, we're copper tone. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Um, now, we established some of the problems we have, which is gentrification and homelessness, right? And do you want to talk about what gentrification is? Um, basically, they come and take all the land, evict the people that live in the van land, which mm -hmm. would be considered quote unquote blacks, minority, mm -hmm. urban community. Because their status is dead. Mm -hmm. See how they're able to just do that? Yep. And then they redevelop the community for European, Caucasian So that's, that's literally an example of them living off our estate and our birthright, because mm -hmm. we won't do it. And this is always forcibly yeah. removed from your location. So what, you, so what you're saying right now is that they're forcing indigenous people off of their land. Yes. That's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Now here's what the rights of indigenous people has to say, has to say about that, right? So we're just going to go into um, Article 2 on the rights of indigenous people. And this is about gentrification, so keep this in mind, keep this in context. Yeah, all right. Indigenous people and individuals are free and equal to all other peoples and individuals and have the right to be free from any kind of discrimination and the exercise of their rights, in particular, that based on their indigenous origin and identity. Meaning, when we say we're Moors, you can't tell us that we're not Moors. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Article 8. I didn't write that down. Article 8, Clause 2. Let's just go into Clause 1. Indigenous people and individuals, so that means if, because you know, our people are asleep, like, mm -hmm. the masses are asleep. So, most of the time you see individuals running around talking about, we're Moors, everyone wake up, please, because we need help, mm -hmm. right? So, that's why it says individuals, because the rest of the world knows what's going on. Uh -huh. It's just we're the ones who don't. Right. So they, they specifically set things up so individuals can help fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Have the right to not be subject to forced assimilation or destruction of their culture. Clause two. States. So this is the state's responsibility to us. Mm -hmm. States shall provide effective mechanisms for prevention of and redress for. And then it has the following. A. Any action which has the aim or effect of depriving them of their integrity as distinct as distinct peoples or of their cultural values or ethnic identities b any action which has the aim or effect of disposing them of their lands territories and resources c any form of force population transfer which has the aim or effect of violating or undermining any of their rights d any form of force assimilation or in uh, integration e any form of propaganda designed to promote or incite racial or ethnic discrimination directed against them. So doesn't it just say the state must protect us from mm -hmm. gentrification? And they're the ones implementing it. Why? Because we don't claim our land. We don't claim our land and we're under colonial occupation. This whole racism thing, the stuff that we're complaining about, it's not racism, it's colonial occupation. Mm -hmm and conversion of our estate. That's gentrification. Mm -hmm. What else do we have written down here? I wonder what's going to happen in Texas. <laughs> Article 10. Indigenous people shall not be forcibly removed from their lands or territories. Isn't this the cure to gentrification? Mm -hmm. 
How come black people and Indians are talking about this when this is the cure? But they, they talk about, oh, you need to own more homes and get a mortgage and and and, and then you'll hear a lot. I hear a lot of black people saying, buy black, buy back the block. So you're buying back something that's already yours. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? No. If this is my laptop and you have it, and the United Nations says Jamal has the right to his laptop, why would I pay you for something that's mine? Mm -hmm. And it's simple, mm -hmm. right? All right. No relocation shall take place without the free, prior, and informed consent of the indigenous peoples concerned, and after agreement on just and fair compensation, and where possible, with option of return. So that means they can't tell us what to do unless we agree to it. Why? Because we're the heirs of the land. Mm -hmm. Because our status is that of nationals, not citizens, and not subjects. When you say you're black, Indian, Spanish, you're going to be subject. Mm -hmm. Not a citizen. You see, this is also why they claim eminent domain over people. Because they're acting like government, and they're claiming eminent domain, meaning you're a subject, so we can do whatever the hell we want. Mm -hmm. But the people don't know that, so they don't have the knowledge, so they don't have imperium, mm -hmm. so they can't do anything. Yeah. You see, this is the knowledge being handed to the people, literally. And Obama signed this when the Bush administration wouldn't, and no one else wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But then people say Obama didn't do shit for black people, because he didn't. He did shit for Moors, mm -hmm. for indigenous. You see what I'm saying? So it's like people's concepts are like all messed up yeah. because of European occupation and indoctrination, which we keep calling education when it's really not. No. So they're telling us, they're telling us all the stuff to keep us dumb. They're abusing us. We know it, and then we won't argue what the facts are because we have an emotional connection to the word black and African American and Spanish and I'm a Latino and mm -hmm. I'm a strong black man and when that's really what's killing us. Mm -hmm. You know, Noble Durali said one of the problems is we keep using those words that delude to slavery. Mm -hmm. You're you're using a word that puts you in an inferior status. It's it's literally the words that we're using that that's the problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it, it has it's really nothing else. Mm -hmm. That and there's a physical presence of European you know de facto persons on our land and and, and their companies that are suppressing us. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like it's like. <coughs> There's a leech on our hand, and it's sucking our blood. Mm -hmm. But we keep talking about how how much we have to work to pay a doctor to fix this cold that we have. Mm -hmm. When the issue is not a cold, it's the leech. Mm -hmm. The leech is the European occupiers on our land. Mm -hmm. But we keep talking about racism. Mm -hmm. When that's not the issue. <laughs> the issue is genocide, gentrification, terrorism. An occupation of our land. Mm -hmm. And then they're using mental warfare with the schools and they're not teaching us any of this. No. So it's kind of like, <coughs> once you see the situation for what it is, scary, unpleasant, but you still have to do something about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you still have to like, I feel like you have to tell others like, this is, what, this is what's going on, the gentrification, here's how you fix it. Do you want to come help me fix this? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or just spread the word, and then whoever wants to help will come and help. Which is why we're making these videos. Yes. Yeah. All right. So try to let's try to get back on track because I I can go off. I get all passionate and stuff. <laughs> all right. Um. Let's see what else we got here. Article twenty, right? Indigenous people have the right to maintain and develop their political, economic, and social systems or institutions to be secure in the enjoyment of their own means of substance and development, and to engage freely in their traditional and other economic activities. So that's pretty much saying we have the right to set up a more science temple of America because that's pretty much what mm -hmm. it's supposed to do. It's supposed to help facilitate all this stuff of getting our stuff back. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Uh, Article, Article 20, Clause 2. Indigenous people deprived of their means of substance and development are entitled to just and fair compensation. This is pretty much enforcing the Constitution. Mm -hmm. You can't have your stuff taken without the right to due process mm -hmm. or just compensation. So again, like Nubu Ali said, enforce our free national constitution. Mm -hmm. So remember Article 6 of the Constitution, right? It says all debts and contracts entered into um, in the Confederation shall be valid against the United States and shall be a supreme law of the land, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just read that word for word so I just paraphrased. Just so you have more of a platform to stand on. I have a bunch of stuff everywhere. Oh, four. Article 6, right? Article 6, prior debts, 
national supremacy, oaths of office. All debts, contracted, and engagements entered into before the adoption of this, of this Constitution shall be valid against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation. So that means Articles of Confederation still apply. Mm -hmm. I'll just talk about that. Article 4 of the Articles of Confederation states, every person has the right to uh, free, the right to free ingress and regress into every other state. So that means you don't have to pay toll taxes. Yeah. As an example, that's a way to save finance. Because mm -hmm. taxes, toll taxes are for commerce. So all these trucks, you know, doing business from this state to that state, mm -hmm. you have to, you know, I'm coming to your territory, here's yeah. a little tax. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. But people think... That's for everybody. It, <laughs> see, mm -hmm. that's the knowledge, right? Okay. This Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made, or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land. Now, didn't uh, Obama sign this? He did. So that means rights and indigenous people, the supreme law of the land, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought so. Right? So, again, this is constitutional. And uh, Obama was a constitutional lawyer, and he taught it. He taught uh, constitutional law, right? Article 21. Indigenous people have the right without discrimination to the improvement of their economic and social conditions. Don't we talk about how black people don't have any economic wealth? Mm hmm Including, inter alia, amongst other things, in the areas of education, don't black people talk about how we're so miseducated? Yeah. Employment, don't black people talk about how we don't have any jobs? Mm hmm Oh. Vocational training, meaning to be trained to do a job, mm -hmm. right? And retraining, housing, homelessness, mm hmm Sanitation, health, and social security. What? Is that confusing? Mm, not at all. Is that hard to comprehend or understand? or? No. So why are people still complaining about these things instead of enforcing this and then getting those things? I can, I can pretty much guess why. One, this isn't commonly known. Like, we, we, we all know, like... What's it? Like Empire. We all know that that show's on TV. Mm -hmm. How many people talk about this? Nobody. So you can complain about how we don't have any housing, economic wealth, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. But you're going to watch Empire, which doesn't educate you on shit, and not read this. Mm -hmm. And implement a plan to enforce this. But you know who does read that? Europeans. Europeans. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell, can Europeans. you tell that story? I, I went to the library this over this weekend, and I'm getting out of my car. And this European Caucasian lady is talking to her daughter about how ridiculous the rights of indigenous people is and they can't believe that they would do this to them and, you know, going on and on. And when I got out of my car, she didn't have anything to say, but... Because yeah. you got the copper yeah. skin, right? And everything in this sounds perfectly reasonable. Mm -hmm. And this woman was very upset. Because they benefit off us not knowing we're home. Mm -hmm. Literally. That's why they mm -hmm. do the gentrification stuff. So they come into our shitty neighborhoods that they force us in, right? Mm -hmm. They start fixing stuff. They raise the taxes. We don't know how to combat it. So, mm -hmm. we're, so we're paying taxes on our own land. It's not funny. But we're paying taxes on our own land. We don't know how to fight it. Mm -hmm. The Europeans just say, yep, you got to keep paying. And we think that they're government. Mm -hmm. And they're foreigners, and we know that they're pilgrims. We know that they're from Europe. We know they're Europeans, mm -hmm. but they come to our land, which we don't know is our land, mm -hmm. and they, they force us to pay this stuff. And Noble Drilly said we're going to get taxed on our, we're going to get taxed out of our own homes, and they're doing it right. So mm -hmm. this stuff goes up. We don't know how to fight it because we don't know this, and then the European comes yeah. in and, and it, it benefits them. And it's so sad. Not not one, well, not one, but many of our people won't pick this up, won't read it, won't try to mm -hmm. decipher it and understand it, but believe. <laughs> that every European yeah. Caucasian person is walking around and knowing and fearing this these stuff. things. Yep. Fearing it. Because they know. They yeah. know. It's 2017 and she's stressed out about something yeah. that was signed in 2010. Yep. Obama signed this. Because mm -hmm. they know once the people start enforcing this, they have nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So the Europeans charge us taxes on our land. Once we realize it's our land, who's going to be paying taxes to us? Everybody. <laughs> all these yeah, foreigners, everybody. all these Europeans, yeah. like them, literally them, mm -hmm. going to be paying us rent to be on our lands. That's mm -hmm. the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. That's that letter that we read mm -hmm. from George Washington to the Sultan of Morocco apologizing for not mm -hmm. paying taxes. And we don't have to feel bad about this either. That's, that, what, that's, a, that's the what other thing. Other people feel does. bad. When somebody moves into your house, 
And they're just using up all your resources, eating all your food, mm -hmm. you know, stretched out on all all your space. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you charge them rent? And that's exactly what Cuba did. That's, you right. know, that's perfectly reasonable. If, if you and I were to go to China, mm. wouldn't we have to pay the Chinese government, the Chinese people for being on their land? Yeah. Yeah. Why is that wrong? Mm -hmm. Don't we have to, on our, this is our land, right? Mm -hmm. Us, copper tone people who think that we're black. Don't yep. we go into these homes and we pay these foreigners rent? Mm -hmm. So, but we are morally like, nah, we don't think that's right, but we'll do it. Yeah. You know, we're, we'll let like, people do it to us. Yeah. Yep. Just use and abuse us because we and don't know what to stand on. This is, the, and it's not, for us to enforce this is not racism. It's not wrong. It's this our is, birthright. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a birthright. And we're asking to be justly yeah, compensated. compensated so if i'm like you asked me to use my laptop i can either say yeah you can do it for free or i can say yeah i'm gonna charge you two dollars yeah. an hour just mm -hmm. like when we go to the library and want to print copies they charge us 20 cents a piece of paper there's no wrong with that that's not because no. my skin's brown do you want better if somebody asks to use your house mm -hmm. if somebody asks to use your backyard yeah how long indefinitely mm -hmm. well can you pay me for it that's that <laughs> and that's and that's also why the treaty of peace of friendship was to be signed every 50 years mm -hmm. kind of it's because like you can't transfer hereditaments the land you can't transfer it to anyone else mm -hmm. but you can have an agreement like yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so the rest of the world's no one what's what's up mm -hmm. except for us yeah literally Pe people in uh, in this land mm -hmm. on this land know what's up except for except for the heirs to the land except yep. for the people of the land yeah we're we think all right so we think we're from africa now here's a hundred amazing facts about the Negroes. A short book, so don't be intimidated. This is a tiny book, right? Tiny book. Fact number 64. You don't really... I didn't learn this in, in high school when I was learning about slavery. Oh no, we right? learned European history. This is page 19. The first slaves held in the United States were not black. Now connotatively, they're talking about dark skin, but we already know mm -hmm. black means pale. Yeah. But white. We already know Moors are white people. Mm -hmm. And if you're European, you have to be intermixed with something else to even be considered white. Mm -hmm. Right? So, just, but for what it's saying, they're talking about black and white. Mm -hmm. They were Europeans. So they, and then they specifically say Europeans. Yeah. And then they name their nationalities, mostly British, mm -hmm. who died like flies on the slave ships across. On one voyage, 1,100 perished out of 1,500. At another, excuse me, at another time, 350 out of 400. In Virginia, white servitude was for a limited period, but was sometimes extended for life. In the West Indies, they're talking about here, but the same India. Mm -hmm. Particularly in the case of the Irish, it was for life. White people, Europeans, were sold in the United States, Morocco, up to 1826. 50 years after the signing of the Declaration of, of Independence, Andrew Johnson, President of the United States, was a runaway and was advertised for in the newspapers. Hmm. The, and our people always talk about how, oh, we were slaves. And, so were they. And they were ours. Mm -hmm. Right? Golden Age of the Moor. Because our people always talk about the slavery thing. We keep playing this victim thing. But if you just read a book... Mm -hmm. It will tell you we had them in bondage first, right? Mm -hmm. Now let me see if I can find this real quick. It's probably not going to be real quick because this is a big book. But <laughs> I have a lot of stuff highlighted. Oh highlighted. Uh, yeah, you can pause it. All right, found it. So this is from Golden Age of the Moor by Ivan Van Sertima. Great book, great book, right? So this is page uh, 93. The 700 years that the Moors dominated the Iberian Peninsula, we weren't just there, we dominated it, mm -hmm. was an era during which many people, mostly of European descent, were either migrated or were brought to the lands of Arabia and North Africa. Although large numbers of blacks were brought from the Sudan during this, that, era, that era, 
Studies of the slave traffic of the time show that numbers of peoples of Slavic, that's where slave comes from, Slavic, and European descent placed into servitude far exceeded the number of Sudanese or other blacks brought and sold by Moors. So they always try to say Moors sold black people, mm -hmm. Moors sold Africans. Well, first of all, you're a Moor too. Second of all, everybody was being sold. It wasn't about skin tone. It was mm -hmm. about status, just like it is today, yeah. status. And if you want Moors to apologize, I'll straight up apologize. I apologize for violating our own law and selling our own people into bondage. Meanwhile, today, blacks and Indians who are very own people are selling us into bondage right now. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about emotional stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you want an apology, there you go. I apologize. Now let's fix the issue. This part played out by European captives or slaves in the making of the modern North Africans and Middle or Near Easterns has been ignored by historians to such an extent that most people are not even aware that such an era ever existed. Most people don't even know that we had them in bondage. No. Because the Europeans taught us that they were this superior power. They didn't just came into Africa and stole us because they had guns when we invented the gun. Mm -hmm. Right. So here we go. According to James Willard, an author of Lost Worlds of Africa, Muslim Africans, Moors, brought millions of European slaves over the centuries into North African ports of sale. Tangier, Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli, Fez, and Marrakesh in the northern Egyptian towns. Literally millions were documented as being freed in North Africa by various Christian organizations in Europe. So they would petition. Mm -hmm. They would like raise major finance to free their European counterparts from our, our bondage. Because mm -hmm. we were doing also, you know, foul shit too, you see? Mm -hmm. But they, the Europeans aren't going to teach you that. Like, yeah. you were in the superior power because you had the Moorish Empire, you were controlling shit. They're not going to teach you that. Because they, they want to create an image of us never being... Ex never being top. anything so we yeah. won't be anything. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they, they have this subconscious role of their them in the superior uh, position when they... Obviously they weren't. Mm -hmm. And this is a scholar saying this. Not some black leader just talking. Mm -hmm. this, he, he's backing it up with his book. And then he has references. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Right. In Nature Knows No Color Line, Rogers, J. Rogers, also uh, cites notes of Sir Walter Scott on Spanish Chronicles, which say that European Christians in Spain were forced to pay tribute to the Moors in the form of women concubines. Right. And this is also why, uh, why in the American Revolution, you know, the Dar, the daughters of the American Revolution, the mm -hmm. Europeans were revolting against us because we're the Americans. Mm -hmm. You see, because we were doing stuff to their women, you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Many of the same Europeans brought by the shipload to Africa were sent to America where they remained in indentured servitude. Is that complicated? No. Do they teach this in, in our schools? Not at all. We don't want Do they teach this in black? Right? Uh, this, this woman I'm talking to, she went to HBCU. I told her about this, she said, I never learned any of this. So you go to a historically black college and university, but they're not teaching you how you used to dominate Europeans. Mm -hmm. Now this isn't coming from like, oh yeah, we used to dominate them, but they're not telling you what it was. The real history. Yeah, like yeah, true history. But you went to a HBCU. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about more enslaved Africans, but these so-called black leaders won't teach you this. Mm -hmm. So who's enslaving you right now? Yeah. Still Moors. Mm -hmm. But you think Moors is just some group when Moors is our bloodline. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So our people think like it's like. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally, they're not teaching any of this. Mm -hmm. And they know it. Like, mm -hmm. come on. All right. Let's try to get back on topic. The hell? All right. So we talk about housing. Talk about they can't force, re, uh, you know, locate us anywhere. Yeah. Right. Without our consent. Yep. Right. Yep. States shall take effective measures and where appropriate special measures. So there's already a difference, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to take appropriate measures. And where appropriate, special measures. That means money. That means they're going to fund it. Mm -hmm. Right? To ensure continuing improvement of their, their, econo uh, their indigenous people, right? Economic and social conditions. Particular attention shall be paid to the rights and special needs of indigenous elders, women, youth, children, and persons with disabilities. Right? What else we got here? What else article? Right. Article 25. Indigenous people have the right to maintain and strengthen their distinctive spiritual relationship with their traditionally owned or otherwise occupied and used lands, territories, waters, and coastal seas and other resources and to uphold their responsibility to future generations. So they're saying we have the right to our stuff and we have the right to make sure that our stuff is good for our next generations. Mm -hmm. I was talking to someone who's she lives in the Great Lakes area 
and she was telling me how like it's destroyed due to like gentrification and stuff like that but mm -hmm. the people aren't doing anything about it mm -hmm. so it's kind of like you know they're holding the state accountable and us because mm -hmm. the other half is us you know yeah. what I mean? the majority of it is us and then getting these europeans to fund our stuff because they destroyed our stuff mm -hmm. and that's literally right there right? Black people like to point the finger and not want to be and don't want to do shit. Article 26, clause 1. Indigenous people have the right to the lands, territories, and resources which they have traditionally owned, occupied, or otherwise used or acquired. So that means if we want to claim the land under this library, we have every right to. When I claim the building, you can have the building. But mm -hmm. since your building's on my land, guess who's paying me? Mm -hmm. You. Yep. See? Clause two, indigenous people have the right to own, use, develop, and control the lands, territories, and resources that they possess by reason of traditional ownership, meaning inheritance, or, or traditional occupation or use, as well as those which they have otherwise acquired, meaning all of this is ours. Mm -hmm. So once we start claiming it, you know, the, the right way, not just saying, well, this is mine, even though you live in this house, get out, that's wrong. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, once we start claiming it the right way, there is no adverse claim from anyone else because we're home. Mm -hmm. We have a superior claim on our stuff. Mm -hmm. And this this is just saying that. It's just saying that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. This is just reaffirming it. Mm -hmm. This is just holding the United States Corporation Company a, uh, accountable to this. Mm -hmm. That's all it's doing. So other nation states are trying to help us and we're not doing shit. No. You see what I'm saying? Clause three. States shall give legal recognition and protection to these lands, territories, and resources. Such rec recognition shall be conducted with due respect to the customs, traditions, and land tenure systems of the indigenous peoples concerned. Again, the states are obligated to us once we start enforcing it. And if they don't, guess what we get to do? We get to go <coughs> out to the rest of the world, the United Nations, and say they're violating international law, they're violating our treaties, they're violating our rights, we need help. Can you help us, please? Since they already recognize us as indigenous people, mm -hmm. they're like, yes, we can help you because you have a nation now. Mm -hmm. You're competent now. Mm -hmm. We see that you're trying, we're going to help you now. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're not trying, and they're still trying to help. You see yeah. what I mean? Yeah. All right, let's see that right, 20 here. <coughs> All right, so indigenous people have the right to redress by means that can include restoration or when this is not possible, just fair and equitable compensation for the lands, territories, and resources which they have traditionally owned or otherwise occupied or used, and which have been confiscated, taken, occupied, used, or damaged without their free, prior, and informed consent. So this is pretty much saying, if your community has been gentrified already, mm -hmm. you can come back, sue the hell out of them, and get something out of it. Mm -hmm. By enforcing, you don't, you don't say, like, you, you can't say you kicked us out of our stuff Gentrify our stuff because you're racist. Yeah, nah, you, vi you, you would racist say you violated international law. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, the argument's the same, but it's different. Yeah. One, one holds argue, more weight. Exactly. Mm -hmm. One has a standing at law, the other is how you just feel. how you feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Right? So, um, you know, read more. There's like 30, I think there's only like 34. No, it's, or 46, not, it's not long and it's not a hard read at all. Yeah, it's just a lot. Mm. You know, it's just lengthy. It's not hard and it, it's not difficult to understand. It's I just promise lengthy. you, once you start at the top and start reading, you're going to want to read the whole thing. Yeah, you're going to be like, wow, this really, like, we have all this power. Like, mm -hmm. Right? So let's talk about, you know, the economic game, just as an example. Right? Now, in my book, I talk about how Roger Williams wrote in his book that the Gentiles, he's talking about us, are going to love his name, blah, 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 blah. Now we have uh, Roger Williams Park, Roger Williams Housing, Roger Williams University, Roger Williams Elementary School. Mm -hmm. So all this stuff is named after these Europeans. Mm -hmm. And they get the benefit off of that, right? Now Article 11 states, um, Indigenous people have the right to practice and revitalize their cultural traditions and customs. This includes the right to maintain, protect, and develop the past, present, and future manifestations of their cultures, such as agricultural and historical sites, artifacts, design, ceremonies, technologies, and visual and performing arts and literature. States shall provide redress through effective mechanisms, which such, which, uh, excuse me, which may include restoration developed in conjunction with indigenous peoples with respect for their cultural, intellectual, religious, and spiritual properties taken without their free, prior, and informed consent or in violation of their laws, traditions, and customs. Now, 
Don't they have all these museums with all ancient stuff in it? Mm -hmm. Don't they make money off of that? Yeah. Now, you pay admissions fee. Since it's ours, we have the right to it back. You can say, oh, yeah, you can keep our stuff in that museum. But guess who's paying us? Mm -hmm. Since it's our stuff. But we're not thinking on that level. Don't know why. Well, I kind of know why, but... It's kind of like, once... If someone says this to you, why wouldn't you want to mm -hmm. support this? Yeah. Literally, we talk about economic stuff, and we don't have nothing, because mm -hmm. they have all our stuff. United Nations saying, yeah, you have the right to your shit back. Mm -hmm. Take it if you want. You know, you have the right to enter the kingdom of God if you want, if you so choose. And it talks about that all in the Bible. It says, you know, I'm not, I don't know what it says word for word, but it's, it's always talking about how, you know, you have the right to enter the kingdom of God if you choose. Mm -hmm. So it's a choice. Mm -hmm. So you can enforce this or not. You get what I'm saying? Like... I, I wish I knew exactly, what, but it, it repeats itself. It's like, you know, you can enter into the kingdom if, if you so choose or, or whatever, but it's, it mentions a choice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you can enforce your rights or you can't, but if you don't, stop complaining. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? This, you can make money off of this. Like, mm -hmm. how do you not see that? And complaining doesn't do anything action does. Exactly. And Article 12, right? Indigenous people have the right... To manifest, practice, develop, and teach their spiritual and religious traditions, customs, and ceremonies. The right to maintain, protect, and have access to privacy to their religious and cultural sites. Mm -hmm. The right to use and control of their ceremonial objects. And the right to uh, re repartation of their human remains. So they got all these mummies, all these ancient stuff, mm -hmm. our stuff, and their museums, and they're making money off of it. Mm -hmm. And we're making shit! Mm -hmm. You see, so it's kind of like it's more than racism. It's they're literally profiting off of all of our stuff, and we since we think we're from this one spot in Africa, mm -hmm. that all this, all these temples of the moon and sun here, all these ancient artifacts that they're finding here is not us. Mm -hmm. These Omex heads with big nose, big lips, right? We think that's not us. So we think this ain't us. They literally mock us because our nose and lips, and we think this ain't us. Right. We think this is from Ivan Ben Sardom as well. And if that's not we us, think that's not us. Who is it then? It definitely sure ain't no thin lip, long haired, so called Indian. We think that's not us. We think we're not Aboriginal indigenous to America. We think we're from Africa. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Right? Now, let me just stop right there real quick. I wanted to do this real quick. Right? Easy. Just erase this. I feel like people get the gist already, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we already established that, you know, black or more means any dark skinned person, right? Mm -hmm. We already established that American means any one of the various copper tone natives found in America, right? We already know that the Olmecs are the most ancient civilization here, right? That's mm -hmm. what people say, right? Yeah. Now, Noble Dwelly talks about how the true and divine name of Africa is a Mexum, right? Mm -hmm. We already know the continents, all the continents used to be connected. So this would be Northwest of Mexum, mm -hmm. right? They're called the Old Mech. Old Amexum. That's where you get Old Mech from. So Old. And you can also see how you get Mexican from that too. Mm -hmm. Right? That's where you get Old Mech. And. Now in language, the study of this is called morphology. Right? Now, what does morph mean? To change? Yep. So, like the Power Rangers, I like to use that. It's morph in time and then yeah. they change, right? That's, that's how you figure out what it means. Yeah. To change. And ology is to study, right? Mm hmm. The study of. Yeah, or the study of. So, to study the change. Mm -hmm. So, you're studying how things change. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. And then the process in linguistics is called transliteration. Do you want me to get a close up of this? Yeah, after. Oops, translator A. It's kind of hard to talk and spell the same time. <laughs> Alright, translator A. Alright, cool. What does trans mean? Transfer, transgender, transportation. To, ch to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To change. Litter is letter. And that's an action. Mm -hmm. So, the changing of the letters. See how the letters change? But they're the same, mm -hmm. same word. 
right? They have the same root. Same root word. That means they are the same word. Mm -hmm. See? That's like, for example, text T-E-X-T versus mm -hmm. text T-X-T. Mm -hmm. We're doing the same thing. Same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> now, a Mexum is the ancient name of Africa. Right? In words, you have, you know, the prefix, the suffix, and then the root, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just do this right here. Take that prefix and take that suffix. We have America. Aren't these people copper toned? Mm -hmm. Aren't these people copper toned? Mm -hmm. Okay. Aren't these people copper toned? Yeah. Okay. Now, hold on, let me see. All right, and you have this right here. So the, the Berber word for Morocco is Amuakush. Mm -hmm. Already that phonetically sounds like America, right? But we'll just go through this process anyway, <laughs> right? Amuakush. You can already see how that sounds like America. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's the Berber word for Morocco. Again, same root word, because vowels, A-E-I-O-U, they're interchangeable. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, al Moroccan. that means descendants of the, of the Moroccans, descendants of the Moors, right? Mm -hmm. Same root word. Right? Mm -hmm. Transliteration, changing of the letters. Right? So you drop this L, that, uh, the first vowel changed to an a, a E, the second changed to an I, and then that C is dropped, right? So you got, that changed to an E, changed to an I, one C is dropped. Is that simple? American. Any, do you see any, can any of this, can you get the word Indian from any of that? No. Nowhere is there Indian, India, no Indo, no. But you do have this, the same root word, right? A mare. You get a mare from that? Mm hmm Right? Same root word, M-O, M-E, vowels are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. And in, in Egypt, this means water. Water, right? Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't feel like spelling water out. <laughs> well, let me just do it just, just for people so they, you know, if they want to take a picture or whatever. And we know, that, well, if you read, you'll, you'll quickly find out that the Dogon, who are a tribe in, in, from the nation of Mali, who was part of the Moroccan Empire, other Moors have been traveling across the seas for, for forever. We're mm -hmm. known as a sea fretting people. Mm -hmm. And then the Cherokee word, uh, and Cherokee now means water. Same root word, M M A, mm -hmm. M M U M E M I, same thing. And then you're gonna deny that you're more? Mm -hmm. You gonna say you're Indian? It is right there in the, that language. Literally, culture is in the language. This is why they don't teach etymology. Mm -hmm. This is why they don't teach transliteration, mm -hmm. permutation, morphology. And it, if you go back to the Willie Lynch letter, mm -hmm. that was one of the main, the first goals, change the language yeah. <laughs> to disconnect the people. And then in the Bible, it talks about the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. The people speaking one, the same language, they're undefeatable. Mm -hmm. And then they came in, confused the language, that's the connotative and the denotative, that's not knowing what etymology is, so you can't separate the wheat from the chafe. And we think we're having an argument when I say we're not Indian. Proof! Mm -hmm. Just prove this. Mm -hmm. Prove that we're Indian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People try to say, prove that you're more. Here, prove that I'm not. Mm -hmm. And then expatriation on the United States, it says, if you can't prove that, let's just go into that. <laughs> if you can't prove you're a more, then you're a more, or you're a more subject, right? Mm -hmm. So citizen, citizenship of the United States, expatriation, and the name's the country again, right? Mr. Philip charged the affairs to Mr. Root, Secretary of State, August 3rd, 1906. Sir, there are strictly speaking no Moroccan laws relating to citizenship of more subjects in Morocco. The fundamental laws of this non-Christian country are based entirely upon the Islamic code. 
no part of which treats the subject of citizenship. That was page 459, this is page 416. There are, however, numerous treaties, Brother Abdullah's book talks about all the treaties between us and the Europeans, mm -hmm. between the various Christian countries, because the Europeans were predominantly Christian, and the Moorish Empire, by means of which citizenship in this country is defined. But as I understand from the above acknowledged instructions, that it is not the desire of the department to call for a report upon such lines. I will therefore confine these remarks to general conditions existing, which may possibly be, be some of use in connection with the information desired. So they're saying, we don't want to go too far deep into this, because mm -hmm. then it starts exposing more truth. Pretty much, that's what he just, just said. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Number one, citizenship in Morocco may be said to be governed by the laws pertaining to, pertaining to the same in other countries, with the exception that all persons residing in Morocco who cannot prove foreign citizenship or protection are considered ipso jure uh, by law, that's what ipso jure means, as more subjects. So you have to you have to prove that you're not a more. Mm -hmm. You not the other way around. Because <laughs> you're on, this is Moroccan dominions. Mm -hmm. This is Morocco. Literally just said it. Mm -hmm. And then George Washington's letter to the Sultan of Morocco. Mm -hmm. And he says, commerce and dominions. Mm -hmm. Right? Two and three. More subjects lost their nationality only by becoming naturalized in or protected by another country having treaty relations with the Moorish Empire. That's the 14th Amendment where you keep trying to be U.S. citizens when we will never be U.S. citizens. Mm -hmm. And that's Article 12. I mean, excuse me, Section 12 of the original Article 13 in its 20 sections, and then the Dred Scott case, and it says blacks and descendants of Africans aren't U.S. citizens. Mm -hmm. Because you're in Morocco, the United States is a company doing business on your land, so how can you be a citizen of Walmart? Mm -hmm. How can you be a citizen of Domino's? How can you be a citizen of the United States? Mm -hmm. But we want to deny this is Morocco, because we think we're Indians. Yeah. But these Europeans are talking about this, mm -hmm. and how to hide information from us. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, and we can go more, but we don't. We don't need to. It's it's already clearly stated. Yeah. Black leaders won't talk about that. Indians won't talk about that. Right. So this reinforces the rights of indigenous people. Or well, this this connects you deeper to it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And um, like a lot of people have fear because they don't really know what the law is. Because the Europeans teach us this, this you know you know since their corporation company, they're enforcing their private law on us, which makes it color of law. Mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Because the only law is the Constitution mm -hmm. and the treaties, a peace and friendship, amity, commerce, rights of indigenous people. Declaration on Human Rights, that's the supreme law of the land. Mm -hmm. But we think driver's licenses and paying taxes to these tolls and paying these Europeans when we already established that the IRS is in government. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, this literally is what gives people the power. Right? And I know we went over it last time, but we'll just show it real quick. Because uh, I was talking to someone. She's in the More Science Temple of America. I don't know how our temples ran, but she was asking me for help on a speeding ticket. And I was, I was asking her if she knew how to challenge jurisdiction. Because this is our land, so they have no jurisdiction to summon us to anywhere mm -hmm. unless we agree to it, unless we have a contract with them. And the first, the original contract is the treaty. Mm -hmm. so, and it only states if we harm someone physically, you know, a crime, then mm -hmm. the, the venue is a council court. And it only pertains to crimes. Mm -hmm. And then the rest, um, like the civil issues, the Supreme Court has jurisdiction over that. That's mm -hmm. a federal jurisdiction. That's diversity of citizenship. So it's kind of like, once you realize you're not a U.S. citizen, you're a Moor, that's diversity of citizenship. That's mm -hmm. jurisdiction to have no right to speak to you. So your nationality is your shield. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. And she was kind of like, yeah, but the prophet told us to be um, law-abiding citizens in the government in which you live. Well, first of all, the United States isn't your government, and you can't mm -hmm. live in that. Yeah. So it's kind of like, people need to know like that stuff. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of fear going on, because there's you know, not enough knowledge. But just this was just you know, for the tax thing, right? So yeah. she was asking me for help for a speeding ticket and stuff like that. And I was saying, you know, challenge jurisdiction, boom, 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 boom. And then she brought up that fear thing. Because mm -hmm. she, she just didn't know. 
Yeah. And she wants to align herself with the prophet. And there's there's so much stuff out there saying certain Moors are talking about, you know, breaking laws and boom, boom. But whose law? Whose law? First mm -hmm. of all, whose law? Yeah. Because it's not the American law. It's not the Constitution. We're not breaking that. Mm -hmm. We're just combating someone's private law that they're trying to enforce on us and on our lands. Mm -hmm. That's all we're and, doing. And uh, for everything, you can start with, am I hurting anybody? Now, this is... Like, they it, reinforce that seatbelt <laughs> thing. Am it, I hurting exactly, anybody? Exactly. Now, stare decisive, right? Res judicata. In order for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. So that means someone has to come, write a, write a piece of paper that you did this, specifically name you, mm -hmm. identify themselves, identify you, saying you did this, enter that into the record. Mm -hmm. That's the right to due process. That's the Constitution mm -hmm. says that. You see what I'm saying? And then for an inequity to exist, that's to be a contract that I violated, that a, a person is a party to. So again, mm -hmm. a corpus delecti, injured party, or their property that I broke. And then again, someone has to, a car that's broken can't come to court and say, oh, this person broke me. Yeah. And you have the right to see your accuser's face. That's, that's you, the f uh, Fifth and Sixth Amendment. Yeah. And they have to prove that they're representing a person. A human, now, a human being. Now you have to know exactly than... in law there's two types of person, natural and artificial. Mm -hmm. The artificial is that 14th Amendment. Mm -hmm. That means a corporation. Corporations can't sue you. So when so, they say, so like in, in my situation when, when they, they said I violated the highway. The highway, I push this in this the highway doesn't bleed. And then they say, well, the state feels. Well, they're talking about a corporate state, so how can the state have feelings? Mm -hmm. And if you talk about the organic state, the people. We already decided that in order for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. So this, your state doesn't have any feelings. Mm -hmm. Walmart doesn't have feelings. Mm -hmm. So they use these, these games like on people who don't know. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like just enforce the Constitution. That's what Noble Dry Lee said. Mm -hmm. Enforce the Constitution. And he talks about how bringing, it's, he wants to bring his people back into the constitutional fold of government. So when those people talk about, I want to be law-abiding citizens, he's talking about the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Not some private state, because they're not really states. Mm -hmm. As an example, Rhode Island it literally has this incorporated date on the seal, 1838 or 36, one of those days. Mm -hmm. That means prior to that, it didn't exist. That mm -hmm. means it's not the land, nor the people. Mm -hmm. So that means its laws are private yeah. and doesn't apply to the people unless you agree to be subject to that. Yeah. That means there's a contract. Mm -hmm. So if the state of Rhode Island or any state of is bringing you into their court, that means there's a contract between you and the state that you supposedly violated. So when they're well, when, they, when did you ever sign that contract? Exactly. So you have the right to enter that into the record. So when there's a speeding ticket, which means they're suing you for breaking a contract, you say, okay, let me see the contract that I violated, saying I was going to abide by these so-called mm -hmm. commercial regulations, because that's what they are—the commercial regulations mm -hmm. to protect the people from traveling on the road against the drivers who are conducting business. Mm -hmm. So show me where I signed that saying I'll be subject to being regulated by this. Mm -hmm. That, you're not breaking no laws. Mm -hmm. You're enforcing your right to, you know, be informed of the nature of the crimes that you so-called committed and be confronted by your accuser. That's enforcing the Constitution. Mm -hmm. See, you, you see kind of like... And, and the media tries to portray it as things as little as speeding tickets. It's not a crime. It, they call it crime. But it's... The teaching of this is so much bigger than a speeding ticket. Yeah, but but a speeding ticket is, is just a way like you can save finance by mm -hmm. by not dealing with it. Yeah. The, the same thing. Now this now here's a little bit deeper, right? 1933, they took all the gold out. Mm -hmm. Article one, section eight says only gold and silver is money. Mm -hmm. Article ten says only gold and silver can be used to pay off a debt. Mm -hmm. So since they're acting like government, they can only deal with gold and silver. So they can't even ask you to pay in Federal Reserve notes for paying off a speeding yeah. ticket. And as again, soon as you what, say USD. Exactly. Hi guys. How you doing? You're gonna need much, much more time because the tutors start coming in. I know you're over mm -hmm. an hour. I'm just trying to figure out. Oh no, we're not gonna more need much at all. Oh, all right, all right. And next time, only because you can't move the furniture. Mm -hmm. You just want because, in other words, we're not supposed to lean in. So since there's no money, and Article One, Section Eight says only gold and silver, and then Article Ten says only gold and silver. And then Declaration on Human Rights says you can't be forced to associate since we know the Treasury isn't really the Treasury. Mm -hmm. It's a private commercial bank, mm -hmm. meaning that's someone else's paper. You can't be forced to pay in someone else's stuff. You see, so that's literally enforcing the law. Mm -hmm. It's just we gotta, we got to separate the wheat from the chafe, separate that the United States isn't government, they're private. Mm 
-hmm. And the Supreme Lord lands a constitution. So this private company can't tell us what to do on our land. Mm -hmm. Again, status. You see? Yeah. So, and I really need to bring that paper just to show people, like, it works. Mm -hmm. So this, stopping gentrification, giving the state to fund. So the rights of indigenous people is exactly what Abraham Lincoln set up in 1864 with the uh, Bureau of Refugees, Abandoned Land, and Freedmen, also mm -hmm. known as the Freedmen's Bureau. Yeah. Where he was going to give every man, woman, child, not he, but the Europeans were going to restore our state back to us. Mm -hmm. Every man, woman, child, 40 acres, some finance to fund whatever we wanted to do, and a mule to help with, you know, moving stuff around because there weren't cars like that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and agricultural work. And they were going to fund this stuff. So they murdered him. Hmm. They put him on the copper penny. And they squandered the finance. Meaning they, they shut it down. Hmm. That's why our people still complaining about it. But they don't even know that it was called the uh, Bureau of Refugees, Abandoned Land, and Freedmen. Yeah. They don't even know the history behind you'll it. Never... They just say 40 acres and a mule. Yeah, you'll never hear. And then here's, here's the remedy to 40 acres and a mule. But you have to enforce it. Hmm. You have to... That's why it's called the Moore's Divine and National Movement. Mm -hmm. You have to, first of all, you have to move towards this and then read it. Mm -hmm. And you have to move towards your, your people to help them enforce this. And you have to move against the colonial occupiers to get them to support this. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the Constitution. So, like Drew Ali said, enforce the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Not march, pray, get nothing done. Yeah. Like, it's, it's wild. But since these Europeans are trying to put us on a time limit, because we don't have our own library to go to. Because we just don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we, we have to leave. Yeah. Which, you know, sucks, but until we get our own building, this is what we're going to have to go through. Until our people wake the fuck up. <laughs> so, peace. One to enslave you. I'm from the cradle to the grave. What indoctrinations? What they gave us, made us, played us, but we played ourselves. Made ourselves who we are. Turn into rats from stars. See the caption? It's close but far. Step out the frame and see the real picture. No one else to blame. If you don't get out before they get you. Bet your bottom dollar. Step up, step out of line. Don't they hang you by your collar? Holla! If you hear me, I'm a more. Don't fear me, I'm just trying to express things clearly Every second, minute, hour, day, month, yearly We barely make it above water Get prepared, get ready for the onslaught huh. Yeah, dog. That go. was live Yo, more fire Drop the next one Alright, I'ma drop some old school shit Some exclusive shit This some 98 shit this is off the Crime Connects album, the Indian Sketch TV. You already know what it is, Anonymous in the building. Yo. So now the times are getting shorter, days are getting colder. And gradually we're physically getting older. So now it's time to strengthen up your mind, wise up mentally, rise to the full capacity. And I see you heights to reach the point of eternity. Collaborate with true brothers that you trust Evaluate the situation, be patient and don't rush Now plan your escape before it's too late That's a must, rid of all the vanity Wash away the lust, infatuation with material That shit's got to get fluffed No guarantee you got in life is a return back to dust So live just, 
Cause in these times of deception where they placed us So now we have tribulations daily facing us To keep their money and the system running The ghetto youths gunning And if you ain't on your guard, things can be stunning See the very cunning, but can't manipulate the meek So Jah sent and chose I and I to guide the weak And teach, so they can read the highest peak Of the mountain called Zion I take heed to the awakening of the lion And though he's humble, he walks fierce on the concrete of the jungle And food's scarce everywhere so there's a constant rumble But now we pierce through Babylon so very soon they crumble And they're scared of our origin so behind their back they plot and mumble Yo, and they know where we're from, they know where the foundation But neglect all the facts, they wanna send us back home Don't take our demands, they devise their own plans Prepare for a disaster, replicate and make clones Rep the truth shall be shown, that's why I hold this microphone To make it known, to get to use that ain't no longer after all